down in the uh, in the valleys, the roads uh, are covered, and it's a, it's a sloppy ride in. And more is on the way as the day goes on today, right? We're talking about uh, a winter weather advisory to the north. Uh, they're talking uh, a winter storm warning. So they could get, I don't know, six to several inches somewhere in there. But for the valleys and for the southern portion of the area, uh, looking at a winter weather advisory kicking in this afternoon. That'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, is it me or is it uh, not even December yet? And yeah. we're on our third <laughs> weather winter weather event. Yeah. It's, and uh, Thanksgiving was was below zero. Yeah. It's not a great start to what's going to be a probably long and bitterly cold winter season. It does uh, does kind of seem that way. So we do have some uh, delays. Some, do you have those uh, I'm pulling delays them up there? here. My laptop is uh, not a few, cooperating. A few delays here this morning that we'll get to uh, coming up in just a, uh, just a little bit. I uh, want to talk uh, and start out with what happened yesterday. And I know this probably isn't breaking news and there's so much going on in the world uh, but this, uh, I think, is worth talking about, and I watched it yesterday. Uh, NASA's InSight spacecraft. Did you see any of this? Any of this video? No. I watched it go down, and because on the Apple TV there's a NASA app, and I I downloaded it, and at around two forty five, two forty eight yesterday, it all started, and you literally watched them. This is a six month six month journey that this uh, this spacecraft has been going on 300 mi- million miles and it had to be exactly perfect in order to get into the atmosphere of mars and to land on mars and it did and it sent back pictures within like 30 seconds or maybe it, maybe it was a couple of minutes but it sent back a photo like a minute later i didn't even understand what the photo was but i guess it was the horizon and it showed the the surface of mars but it was really quite incredible uh, and to watch all those uh, NASA scientists go nuts and get excited, something you don't see scientists normally do. They were even doing, like, you know, in, uh, in the NFL, where they'll come out and have this weird little handshake type thing. You probably see it in, yeah. is, in more in college. You, you know, they're slapping across and turning around and high-fiving, under-fiving, low-five. Uh, the scientists were doing that. It was quite an event. Here's some audio from uh, from yesterday. 20 meters 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. Yeah, I mean, that one, you hear her laughing there. She's quite uh, excited. But this is years and years of efforts. And uh, can you imagine? I, I, I guess we probably don't even realize how big it is. To be able to land a, uh, a spacecraft on Mars, it's pretty incredible. Anyway, it happened yesterday. Lots to get into here today. Uh, the weather, we'll talk about. There are some school delays. Do you have those? I um, do. Uh, let's do those right now before we talk to uh, Rachel Sutherland from Fox News. Yeah, we just have four on delay. These are two-hour delays this morning. Edmiston, we have a change. Andrew's telling me there's a change already. So you're going to add Dodgeville to that list, two-hour delay. Two-hour delay. Edmiston, Fort Plain, Holland Patton. Dodgeville, Oppenheim, you afraid of St. John's, St. Johnsville. Uh, so Storm Watch is brought to you by, of course, Warner Sales and Service and Cliff's Local Markets. You can get those. I mentioned I was having a hard time with my, my laptop this morning. Get it right on our app. So uh, Rachel Sutherland standing by right now. Today, just when you thought the election was over, for us, uh, Oneida County is doing the final, final tally on the uh, 22nd Congressional District, although that race has been called in favor of the Democrat, Anthony Brindisi, upsetting the incumbent. Um, but there is a uh, there's a big election, a runoff election today in Mississippi, and it's been quite controversial. Rachel Sutherland, good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, this is a runoff between Republican Senator Cindy Hyde Smith and Democrat uh, Mike Espy, uh, the president in Mississippi last night. Of course, uh, going for the GOP candidate there because this would expand the Republicans' uh, majority in the Senate if they're able to get this seat that would give Republicans a 53 to 47 seat advantage rather than a 52 seat advantage uh, in the Senate. But yeah, it's been controversial uh, because it it didn't start out to be, but uh, Hyde Smith made some kind of comment about uh, attending. She would be happy to attend a public hanging. She said that the uh, comments were misconstrued by her uh, opponent, but still, this has been something that wasn't expected for Republicans for it to be this tough in Mississippi. And uh, probably when we when we hear the comments it it might not mean as much uh, to us but in mississippi there is a 
There's a history, an ugly history of lynching, which um, is, yeah. is something that's very sensitive for, for those yeah, people. Yeah, deep, deep South here, yeah. history of racism and, and, and violence. Uh, she has said that she did not, that was not what she intended at all, but that's that's really been a thorn in her side uh, the entire time. And now with this runoff, because she couldn't get the votes to be able to win it, you know, straight yeah, out. But yeah. she's still the odds-on favorite for today, but it shouldn't have been this hard in Mississippi. Uh, and the president, um, she's gone all in on uh, President Trump, right? And the president was oh, there, yeah. too. Oh, completely. Yeah. She is um, She is definitely a, a, a Trump supporter, and that will probably help her in, in the Deep South in Mississippi. And I, I would expect her to win today, but uh, it, this is something that would give, you know, Republicans that 53-seat majority. And in the Senate, where oftentimes it takes 60 votes to get anything done. So uh, this is something that Republicans have been pouring a lot of time and and effort into. All right, Rachel, we appreciate it. Thanks so much. Uh, Rachel Sutherland from Fox News. Coming up, we'll talk to Tanya J. Powers on uh, Dictionary.com has chosen their 2018 Word of the Year. Kind of surprised this was it, but uh, we'll get to it. Uh, Peter Franklin, the Gabby Cabby coming up also. And I want to talk to Ed Welch from uh, AAA. On General uh, General Motors' big announcement yesterday, did you see this? And this is a kind of a they're they're acting a bit of a, a, a ahead of the curve, anticipating uh, a slump in sales. But there is a real problem when it comes to selling sedans, apparently, um, where the market has just gone completely flat. It used to account for about fifty percent of automobile sales in the United States. It's now down to thirty percent, and GM is big when it comes to sedans. So. They're talking about 15,000 jobs. You know, it's something uh, I've reached out to Ed. I think he's going to join us this morning. But he actually did this on his show going back maybe a month or so that the sedan market, had the bottom had fallen out of it. And uh, someone else, I think, was it Ford, stopped making sedans? Um, we'll, we'll get the yeah. info from Ed coming Yeah, up. SUVs, huge, and the uh, the electric cars, and um, even even uh the automatic driving, you know, auto, auto assist and all that stuff. That technology seems to be where everybody's looking to go. Uh, anyway, we'll talk to Ed Welch on that. Coming up, what else do I have? How about the, this stuff that never happens to me? An ATM in Houston started spitting out $100 bills instead of $10 bills on Sunday. And somebody posted about it online, and people started lining up. Eventually, cops had to come and disperse the crowd the bank finally shut it down. It's illegal to take money from a malfunctioning ATM. Did you know that? No, I, I didn't know it was a, illegal, but I know, you know, if you go to take $100 out of the bank and they give you $15,000, you are on the hook for the... You are, but you know what? Um, I don't know if Bank of America is feeling uh, like it's holiday time or they've had a lot of bad stories over the course of the last couple of years. Um, bank, America is, bank of America is saying they're not going to prosecute anyone. And they're going to allow the people to keep what cash they were able to get out of the machine. Get out yeah. of here. Uh, no word on how much exactly was taken, but here's a witness, uh, the local news and a spokesperson for the bank. Listen to this. The bank will be sending them letters to return the money back. That's what we thought. I mean, ATMs have video of transactions, time stamps. Federal law even says you got to give it back. I mean, this seemed like a no-brainer. You have to give the money back, right? There's no free lunch, and if you receive money that you know is not yours and you refuse to pay it back upon demand, you can, at the discretion of the district attorney's office, face possible theft charges. But Bank of America, perhaps in a somewhat puzzling goodwill gesture, says the folks can keep their ill-gotten gains. The official Bank of America response, quote, This was an incident at a single ATM in Houston caused when a vendor incorrectly loaded $100 bills in place of $10 bills. We have resolved the matter. Customers will be able to keep the additional money dispensed. So you think about it. If you are getting a $100 out, you just got a thousand. Yeah. Right? Because you'd be getting getting $10, $10 bills. Instead, they gave you 10 $100 bills. It thought it was dispersing $10 bills. So I wonder if and it was... the vendor is going to be the one that pays. This is why... Yeah, absolutely. This is why Bank of America is like, listen, let them keep the money, you moron. 
Wait till we get a hold of you. It makes me wonder, though, because typically if you took 100 bucks out, you'd get 520s, right? Or you get 420s and 210s. So I wonder if you'd get 420s and $200 bills. Uh, this was dispensing $10, $10, $10, dollars bills. So maybe it might have been. Maybe there were a couple of 20s in there, but every time that a 10 came out, wow. it gave 100 But, you know, let's look at it from the possible uh, 10 $100 bills that came out. You thought you were getting 100 you got 1000 not all that bad. And they said they could keep it. I can't believe it. Hard to believe. Bill in Herkimer on the weather. Good morning, William. Hey, good morning, you guys. How are you doing out there? It's sloppy, isn't it? Yeah, I was just out shoveling. Uh, I want to put a heads up to people. Nobody's mentioned this. I've heard a lot of tree limbs snapping off down here. Mm, yeah, this is a heavy um, snow. Nobody's really mentioned it, you know what I mean? Yep. And that can be very dangerous. And, and when you're shoveling that, you literally, when as you shovel and you lift the snow, there's there's a, a, an amount of water that's sitting underneath the at it's the bottom. It's very heavy. you yeah. got to be careful with this stuff. Yeah, it's sloppy. All right, Bill. Yeah, good to you, good you have a good day. All right, be you safe. Too. Thanks so much. Right. Uh, and you never know, you're driving down the road, a branch can come down. And if we get a lot of this snow today, it could mean, uh, I mean, what was last spring? We had a, that terrible storm. Right around uh, the heart running walk, yeah. right? It took trees down and limbs all over the place. It was that Friday, and I guess while we have the chance here, uh, the caller was right, but I'll remind everybody about heritage logging. If you got tree limbs and branches coming down from this heavy, wet snow, 24-hour emergency service, heritage logging, they'll come take care of it. They take care of your property like it is their own, Seven nine six two nine four one, or online at heritagelogging.com. All right, a couple of other stories uh, that Andrew will be uh, working on here. We have a uh, this train uh, uh, accident where the person, the victim, has died, right? Yeah, he um, was pronounced dead at the scene. Yeah. Utica Police and Fire responded uh, just before around 7 p.m. for a report of somebody being struck. Uh, and then they they arrived. Somebody was deceased, and they'll provide more details uh, mm. as necessary. Uh, they're saying that the, before long you'll be able to eat romaine lettuce again if you're going on this uh, this craving and you, you're, you want a Caesar I salad or something. I need my romaine. Um, the, the, it's apparently romaine. The only romaine you have to worry about, although they're still telling you not to eat any, is romaine lettuce that comes from California. Okay. That's what uh, they believe now. <laughs> so you'll get your romaine back, and you find it to be odd. But my daughter completely loves romaine lettuce. I don't know why. Whenever I go get, oh, I don't, I don't really like that lettuce. I want romaine. Weird, I know, but um, well, you she, can do so much with it for her. It's a, uh, it's a big deal. You know, she has can... been in withdrawal. It's been really rough, Andrew. You can do like wraps. You know, a lot of people will do instead of using some kind of wheat wrap or something, they'll just use a, a piece of romaine. And they'll That's put true. they'll put stuff in that it. Is so you true. can really do a lot with yeah, it. Yeah, you especially if you're on a, a low carb diet, you can kind of make it. Up, it's almost like a little. Well, you call it a wrap. It is a main wrap. Yeah, I like it. Uh, coming up, we'll talk to Tiny Powers on Dictionary.com's choice of their word and words of the year. Wait till you hear what their number one word is. I guess it's kind of fitting. We'll get to it. Coming up. Remember, uh, we have some school delays. We'll do that in a few minutes. And the roads are sloppy. You'll need a little extra time. This morning. Tanya J. Power standing by right now from Fox News. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning. I apologize in advance. It may be a little loud. I'm outside. So. Uh, uh, how, how is your weather in the, in the Big Apple? Right now, it's just kind of chilly. It's in the 40s right now. I think it's going to be about 45 for the high. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to get any rain today, though. So that's good. It's just it's just chilly. Not Nothing like what you guys are having to deal with. Yeah, it's just really, really yeah. uh, sloppy out there this morning. All right, Dictionary.com has come out. And I, I at first I'm like, ah, is this really a word of the year? But I guess maybe it is. I yeah. thought it was actually a, 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 a Miss USA contestant. Mm. You know. Oh, like I see. <laughs> I was going to say it. I'll let Tanya say it. Go All right, ahead. good morning. Good morning. The, the word of the year from Dictionary.com is, Misinformation. Ah, and who who had the misinformation with Miss USA? It was uh, uh, yeah, no. I was you know they've like I'm a completely mi- lost. They, where you're they've going. like a miscongeniality. Well, this ah. is misinformation. Oh, miss information. In Je- remember Jeff's doing his weak streak of okay. of great jokes. Okay, <laughs> which, which is which yeah. is far better than the runner up, Miss Behaven. So that's the difference. Miss Behaven. Miss Behaven. Miss Behaven. That's the, feel free to use Jeff's material here later yeah. this morning. Well, I'd <laughs> like to meet Miss Be- Miss Behaven. So. <laughs> All right. So obviously, this has been the year um, of misinformation, and uh, and leading the way in terms of exposing it 
uh, self-proclaiming, uh, self-proclaimed as the, as the president of the United States. Misinformation, fake news. Misinformation, yeah. And by the way, it's important to note that misinformation is one thing. Disinformation is another. The two are not, you can't exchange one for the other. Mm. What, one can become the other, but you can't use them interchangeably. Uh, yeah, so how does that, uh, so explain the difference between the definitions. So misinformation means... Yeah. Mi- that one means if you share information that is false and you don't you don't know that it's false. Mm. Disinformation is when you knowingly have put together, you know, information that is due to, you know, it is not it's not Got correct. It. It's gonna mislead, it's gonna be false. Then you share it. That's disinformation. Mm. Which could cause others to share misinformation. Right. Ah, okay. That's why, that's why one can become the other. Got it. Very interesting. Uh, now, did they put out a whole group of words, or is this just their their annual, here's our word of the year? This is the word of the year, but there, there's also runner-up, uh, three of those, actually. Okay. And one of those is representation. Mm-hmm. One is self-made. Um, and the other one, oh, it just went out of my head. It's all right. Uh, we wouldn't want you to give us any misinformation. Misinformation. <laughs> I set them up, you knock them down. I love this. <laughs> this is why I love talking to you all in the morning, right? All right, Tanya, you have a wonderful day. Enjoy that <laughs> uh, that mild weather in the Big Apple. Thank you. Right. Good okay. luck on your uh, on your commute this morning, guys. Yes. I know it's going to be rough. All right. Thanks so much. Snow had been uh, coming down probably for the last couple of hours. Yep. It's a wet snow, maybe about a half an inch, maybe an inch or so out there already. And the roads are uh, are somewhat covered. We- so it's that type where you're driving down the road and you leave a trail behind you. Oh, yeah. And then it becomes this kind of a rut. Mm-hmm. Where you're mm-hmm. you're driving and, and all of a sudden you're you're in the other lane. You didn't plan to be there. Yeah, it was really slick coming in. Did, when you came in this morning, was there even snow out there? It was rain. It was rain, yeah. yeah. It switched it's over. Accumulated. But it was still, I mean, it was getting slushy, yeah. but it was still rain. Um, I kind of used yesterday as, because by the time we had gotten to oh. evening hours, at least in the valleys, um, the snow is, was pretty much gone. There yeah. was still a little ice lingering around in uh, maybe some areas, but uh, the snow is pretty much done. And I was able to get around and just realize, ooh, I left that lawn chair out. And, oh, <laughs> the grill. I forgot to move the grill. Ooh. So I, I kind of was able to use that time to the fish. get that stuff done. You got fish the heater are, in? Uh, heaters in. Fish are, uh, I'm telling you. There's like 20-some-odd fish yeah. in there now. It's unbelievable. It's cozy for them. They're procreating. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling that they're gonna, we're going to have to get a larger pond or something because <laughs> they are we're procreating. We're going to need a bigger pond. You, imagine how many I'm going to have by the springtime. Well, I told you you're going to be stocking restaurants by the time yeah. March rolls yeah. around. <laughs> big. That and toads. We have a huge toad population. Uh, they, uh, and you got to watch that. I'm not sure that's a good thing if you have a pond. These toads get in there, and they lay their eggs, and thousands of, uh, of what do you call them? Pollywogs? Pollywogs. Is that what they are? Yeah. I guess. Thousands of them. No, no. They're t- <laughs> tadpoles. 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 You're, okay. you're thinking of Polly and Tad. What is it? No, no. A Pollywog and a tadpole, I think, are synonymous, I aren't think, they? I um, Okay. I, I really don't want to get into is there, a debate is there a about gender, Pollywogs is there, is there a gender? Maybe it's a gender thing. Maybe a tadpole um, is a male baby. We had uh, received a. Um, I have a friend who who were told uh, her mom might have been kind of getting forgetful in her her age, her old age, and uh, she was uh, buying air fryers. And when she checked on her mom, uh, delivered to the house, they had uh, she had about six air fryers. Oh. Um, and she just kept forgetting that she'd ordered one, and she'd order another one. So they were kind of stocking up. So we all got air fryers. All of her friends and family got air fryers. We got one. And I, for me, it's just another one of these devices. I actually wanted these to get one. cooking devices. We've got so many of them. Yeah, but this is, you yeah. can do a lot of Where do you put them all? healthy. You really can. Like steaks and, and she made, and stuff. My wife made uh, chicken wings. It's un- they were unbelievable yeah. with a lo- with olive oil, salt, pepper, and a little garlic. Really unbelievable. You don't get all the grease or the smell. What was your thing? You, don't. you, you wanted to make sandwiches in them or something. Well, the air fryer you can do anything. You with can vegetables do, and steak listen to and this. All that. This is these are some do's and don'ts. Uh, if you end up buying someone or getting an air fryer, okay, and maybe you want one, so 
you know, every once we'd always get like when the kids were younger, we'd get you know wrap it up for ourselves and say, yeah. "Why, Santa, that was so nice of you. <laughs> you are something." Um, anyway, so here are some do's or don'ts. Do you care about it? Is that me or you? That's Andrew. Oh, that's, oh there that's we go. Coming. Uh, things that you can do. Do use the inserts. Andrew, do you know about the inserts? No. Uh, you, they've, it comes with these inserts. You can put baskets in, all these oh, okay. little, yeah. uh, and it says you should use them. Um, you could even make breads. The pan insert for cake, banana bread, and foods with the sticky glazes, metal skewers for spit roasting, chunks of meat kebabs, and breakfast sandwiches can all be made in the air fryer. Yeah, the breakfast sandwiches. Somebody was telling me about that. Really good. Do Do bake bread. When you realize your air fryer is basically a small, high-powered oven, making bread in it is a no-brainer. Think loaves, pizza crust, and even cinnamon buns. Uh, Do roast veggies, and it browns them, too. Yeah, I need to get one of these. Like, um, uh, it's the best way for you to cook your uh, your vegetables because you don't have all the the oil and uh, and the grease. Whether it's butternut squash, potatoes, zucchini... Leave them whole like uh, Brussels sprouts or mushrooms. The air fryer uh, browns them and cooks them up. It's really, really good. Do you care about this? I do. Because I, I, I have, this is I on have, my Christmas list. I can so ask Nancy and see if, if she's got another air fryer. <laughs> she's got a Andrew, few. I was going to say, I mean, I'm willing to pay Andrew for it. Wants one. Uh, do use your air fryer instead of the microwave. Uh, virtually any dish you're about to make in a microwave oven will be better in an air fryer. Do coat food in a little oil before uh, before cooking. Yeah, like a little brush. But but a but a but a, a good oil, mm-hmm. like an olive oil, extra virgin. Uh, don't overcrowd the fryer basket. Can I tell you what not to do in the fryer basket? Don't do mozzarella sticks. Oh. We bought the frozen mozzarella sticks. They're just not. Those aren't good mozzarella sticks to begin with. Right. They crumble, and the mozzarella gets all over the place. My cousin got a little experimental. He did big uh, Oreos and took the Pillsbury dough mm. rolls and wrapped the. The oh, Oreo uh, uh, in the dough wow. and put that in the air fryer. Now that's Ooh, healthy, baby. Yeah, yeah. very healthy. Because um, it doesn't have the oil, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to be just it's got the dough. Uh, yeah. Do not spray nonstick spray directly in the cooking <clears throat> basket. I guess it's a good tip. I do think not, a lot of people would do that. Do not use a wet batter or coating. So if you were you were dipping fried chicken into a, a coating. You would not put that in. You don't put. You don't do it that way. Okay. Something that's got to be something that was already pre frozen or done. I, I guess I don't know. Don't cook foods that that need to absorb lots of liquids uh, because they won't. They'll come out very very dry. Like a good example of that would be you wouldn't want to cook rice in an air fryer. Okay. All right. But other than that, uh, it is one of those devices. And I I say we have. You know, the, we've got this one and that one. They go on the shelves. They take up so much space. You get them out. They're a pain enough to get out. Then they're a pain enough to, the clean, to clean them. Um, this might be one of those that kind of lands up there with the uh, with the crock pot. I have well a, worth uh, well worth having on your shelf. I have a mini fryer, like a real fryer. It's only yeah. maybe two by three or something. So it's a deep. You'd put in oil in that. Yeah, you put yeah. oil in, and I'll yeah. do like you know. I can get like you know. 12 to 15 chicken wings in there. You know, the other problem, the other thing about that is uh, that you don't get with the air fryer is when, and we have one of those too. You have to clean it constantly. It's not just the cleaning constantly. It's the, it's the smell and and the oil that evaporates onto your ceiling and into your, onto your cupboards. It's just clothes and you smell it. It's a, it's a mess. You do not get that with the air fryer. So, Hey, holiday time. You're thinking about something to get for somebody or for yourself. Or six of them. Uh, the air fryer is the uh, is the way to go. Hold on tight. We'll talk to Gabby Cabby, Peter Franklin, with his tales from the Big Apple from New York City. Coming up next to WIBX. Quickly, the schools that are delayed with two-hour delays this morning. Yes, and again, it's brought to you by Cliff's Local Markets and by uh, Warner Sales and Service. The following schools are all on a two-hour delay so far this morning. We have Dodgeville, Edmiston, Fort Plain, Holland Patton, Oppenheim, the afraid of St. Johnsville, and Poland, all on a two-hour delay. That list is right on our website, our Facebook page, and our WIBX 950 app. Were you surprised on uh, on Thanksgiving Day the number of people that were out um, shopping? I totally avoided it. I don't know how many people were out. Um, all I, I cared about. You, I got to tell you, uh, it was packed. You went out? No, I had to go out because uh, we were all at my parents' for dinner, and we had to leave early. 
because my son had to be to work. Um, where he works, they opened at 5 o'clock. Wow. So he had to be there at 545. And I'm going to tell you something. Traffic was heavy. There were lines. I, I, was, I was really shocked. There wow. were lines out there. And it's completely changed Thanksgiving. Uh, and not for the better, in my opinion. I agree. Peter Franklin, Gabby Cabby, gone are the days when we all were home, everything was closed. Maybe there was a movie theater open. And it was Thanksgiving. Now everybody's rushing away from dinner uh, to get out there and get their deals. Well, and that's the way it was in New York, and uh, it's going to be for the whole holiday season. I mean, people are just selling everything, buying everything. Uh, you're right. It's a tremendous uh, commercialism, but uh, yeah. that's the way it's all worked out. I wonder if that will change because there's a, uh, there is a movement now where people are saying, I will not shop. I vow to not shop on Thanksgiving Day. Um, the problem is when you offer a, you know, a 42-inch TV, flat screen, 4K, smart TV for $85. <laughs> like, yeah, and, the and also turkey. it's the sport of the shopping, too. It is. I mean, you You're know, right. this is one of the things where they say online is dead online. I mean, uh, mortar and the brick is dead. Everybody's going to be buying online. But there's something to be said for squashing into yeah. a store. Yeah, you know, and I, I think, think that, that was just proven this week anyway. Well, you see the lines, and it, it's almost, it is a sport. They're out there. They're excited. They're taking pictures of each other, and uh, it's a, it is quite something. Sometimes there's jousting mm-hmm. that goes yeah, on. Yeah. Just get the hell away from We have from jousting yeah. all the time, especially yeah. with the yellow cabs. Oh, I'll bet. You got it. Uh, sometimes the, when, the, when two people arrive at the same time, it's, uh, the battle's on. Oh, it's wonderful. If somebody comes from the left side, somebody comes from the right side, and you can just sit there and watch them yell and scream at each other, <laughs> making sure you don't make any judgment at all. Uh, listen, uh, I wanted your take uh, in, in a city so diverse as New York. I wanted your take on what's going on at the border, the southern border, Texas, Arizona, and California, um, with the caravan and the 5,900 U.S. troops that were sent there and the president saying they're all men and they're criminals, uh, uh, media reporting, oh, oh, it's children, um, uh, families, it's horrific. Which is it? Is it somewhere in the middle? And what's your take on all of that? Yeah, I think it's somewhere in the middle. But one of the things that I think people are underestimating is New York City has a huge Latino population. Mm. We have Spanish Harlem. And when I say Spanish, I'm not talking about Spain, because that's, you know, those are Europeans. I'm talking about Latinos from Mexico and Guatemala and Salvador. They're not looking for these people to come here because they figure they're going to be hurt the most. Right. I mean, person after person after person that I speak to, run into, no, they're not happy at all. And yeah, I think there's a perception that all the Latinos that are here already are just sitting by and saying, oh, come on, you all come, you all come, we'll come yeah. here. It's not the case. They're terrified of them. Well, I, I don't mean terrified, uh, sure, you know, physically, but I mean terrified they're going to lose their jobs mm-hmm. because they figure the new people are going to work for less. And you know, the fact is that we uh, we cannot. This is challenging us, putting us in a uh, in a game of uh, of idaria, right? Um, we have to be humane. It's important for us as Americans to be humane. At the same time, there has to be the law of order. Um, well, it's a situation that, that just cuts itself that it can't be humane. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's such a, an unbelievable, terrible mess. And, of course, the television people make the, the, the statement by showing the pictures with the gas and all that kind of stuff. It's just a bad, bad thing. And in a way, it's it's kind of, a, you know, a really a con because the United States, in a way, has said, come here, work here, you'll make money, and we want you to come here. And yet when it comes to that point, the United States is turning around saying, no, we don't want you yeah, to come yeah. here. You better not come here. You know, if you said it's against the law to hire an illegal alien, I mean, made it, and they made it really illegal, you know, the, the hiring of it, mm-hmm. th- that would stop a lot of this, I think. But they don't do that. Uh, I want to ask you about um, the, the holidays. Is uh, is in New York City, is it tradition? I mean, trees, it's a little bit different. It's a lot of apartments. It's hard to have a big tree. Um, and then turkeys. Uh, Thanksgiving is big. Turkey's big on Thanksgiving in New York Yeah, as very well. big. And yeah. I always like to say money can't buy you happiness, but it can certainly buy you decorations. Mm. And because of our large companies and associations and what have you, the decorations, and they're already up in a way. I mean, it's the earliest that I can remember. Makes New York City a lot of fun to take a look at and see. As far as the turkey goes, one of the customs in New York City with a lot of companies is that the uh, bosses will give each one of the employees a turkey. 
before the holiday, oh, which okay. means yeah. uh, did you give a turkey to every one of your staff we, members? We did this not. Year? No, we didn't do that. Nobody did that. Yeah, well, we should an do idea that. for next year. I like it. How about Christmas? We could do it at Christmas time. Yeah, but remember, Christmas is only for Christians in a way. Thanksgiving is the big holiday in New right, York. With, right. with 176 languages being spoken, boy, we got diversity. Uh, but in New York, of course, and throughout the country, uh, it's uh, Hanukkah coming up, uh, Kwanzaa, and uh, uh, is there another one? There Best of us? Be. I don't know. I what can't keep one track that of that. Steinfeld had uh, that might have been Festivus. Festivus, Festivus yeah. Uh, either way, it's all um, it's it's all big money, though, right? And and when you're you're walking along uh, Fifth Ave, you see these uh, these incredible window displays. It's really quite uh, people taking pictures of them. It's really something. Yeah, and there is a definite change in the mood. I mean, it's a tough time of year for a lot of people. They say it's the time of year when people can feel sad and unhappy because supposedly not in the mainstream of having fun. But I find, generally speaking. And certainly with New Yorkers, who most of the time are very nice people anyway. But it, it, there is a definite change in mood. Yeah. It really does. Can I uh, just leave you with this one thing, and I'd like your your take on it, is the smells of New York City during the holiday time. It's a, it's a very distinct, the streets, when you're walking along the streets, it's, it's a distinct smell. Yeah, but it's a good smell. A good it smell. Is. Yeah, I mean, it's a good smell. Makes, Smart Alec remarks about New York smells bad. You know, we got 8,000 people. That's the number of people that are on the street selling food. I'm warning everybody, your biggest danger in coming here is you're going to get fat. Because every place you look, there's food, there's food, there's food. And and, and it's safe. It really yeah. is. Street food is kind of safe because these guys and ladies don't go home until they sell everything that's on the cart. So you're not really eating yesterday's hot dog. You're eating today's hot dog. Uh, best tour in New York City. It's Peter Franklin's. Uh, he'll take you around in a cab. And you could have a group of people if you'd like. Go to Gabby.com for details. Peter, as always, thanks so much. We'll do it again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. I don't know if you saw this, Andrew, uh, during the Packers game on Sunday. But apparently there was a, a, an old Vikings fan. And a Packers fan that got into it. Oh, no, I did didn't you see this. this? I yeah. did see this. Oh, this is so, so weird. So an old Vikings fan with gray hair told a young Packers fan to stop being so annoying at the game in Minnesota on Sunday. He was he was going like, woo, 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 yeah, yeah. covering and, his mouth and, and making the, weird noises. And the guy is like, uh, enough of this. I pay for these seats. Shut the hell up, will you please? <laughs> so first he did an impression. Stop cheering. He did an impression of the young. Yeah, but it was, I think it was a bit over the top, right? I Yeah, it was annoying. Get away from me, you piece of garbage. Type of annoying. Uh, anyway, uh, the first he did an impression of the of the guy yelling, the kid yelling that was bothering. Then the young guy immediately started yelling again. So the old man put him in a headlock. A woman intervened. The Vikings scored a touchdown, and the annoying Packers fan started yelling again. Here's some audio. <laughs> I'm just enjoying the game, he said. Everything you want, but you don't do that. Yay! Oh, he's doing the... Yeah. Now he put him in a headlock. Watch the guy. The old guy. Now, now they score. The Vikings scored a touchdown, and the, and the, annoying, the annoying Packers fan starts yelling again. It's like, I'm not sure a headlock was the answer. A punch would have been a little better. Yeah, you know, It's like what I almost did to that New England fan after the game. I couldn't, I couldn't understand that. Yeah, I see? Understand that. see? But your now team's you winning relate. at that point. Yeah. So I, I have to tell you, if you take the time to watch the video, after he puts him in the headlock, the woman intervenes, and the old man is like, oh, my God, I'm beating up like a 15-year-old. <laughs> he's impressed with himself. So he, yeah. he tries to act like he's just not doing anything. And all the fans start cheering because Minnesota scores yeah. a touchdown. So the guy's got to be in his 70s. He puts his arm in the air and starts jumping up in the air, yelling. But it's he's the still weirdest got the thing. Guy like, in the headlock? like he's cheering. No, he let the guy go. But oh. he, he realizes, like, one, okay, he's yeah. being recorded. And two, there's someone's mother telling him, stop beating yeah. up children. What, you what know? am I doing? And he's here? like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. And then so he goes into this thing where he's pumping his fist and jumping. It's like the weirdest transition. From assaulting a 15-year-old or whatever, however old the guy is, to now he's like a, a, a you know a 20-year-old jumping up and down in his well, seat at the stands. Now his video is viral. So um, if he thought he was going to be able to escape this, uh, think again. Seven thirteen. <laughs> uh, we'll t- take uh, Ed Welch. I want to talk about 
Uh, the the story that came yesterday, 15,000 jobs on the line as GM is uh, talking about closing down five plants, including, uh, I believe, four here in the United States. Ed Welsh uh, from AAA and WIBX's Auto Talk is next. General Motors talking about uh, laying off or actually getting rid of 15,000 employees. There's an issue when it comes to slumping sales of sedans. Ed Welch was talking about this just a few weeks back, and he's on the line now from AAA. Good morning, Ed Welch. Good morning, guys. How are we doing today? Good. So at a time when it seems like the economy, the story about the economy is is the booming story, uh, it seems that General Motors is being preemptive here. They want to make sure they don't end up where they were a, a decade ago. That, that's right, Bill. And I think, again, this is very tragic news, but let's, let's take like a 100,000-foot look at this and work our way down. Uh, let's start with the market itself. Uh, since about 2011, the car market has changed greatly. In other words, it has boomed. You may recall 08, 09, 10, it was disastrous for the car business. And we're now approaching almost 17 million vehicles sold this year. We sold 17 million last year. We sold 16 and changed the year before. In other words, the the, the production spiral upwards is going to go the other way eventually. Yeah. So we'll start with that. General Motors is looking at that. Uh, the second issue, of course, is the proliferation of SUVs. Uh, let's face it. People don't want to buy cars. And the people, the cars they are buying, uh, guys like Honda and Toyota, make very nice small cars. So we've, we've kind of lost the smaller car business a long time ago, although General Motors and Ford make great small cars. But people have preferred the Hondas and the Toyotas and the Nissans. But uh, so you, and Volkswagen, you, could, you know, there's a whole list of them. Yeah. So so they're they're. But what are they buying from General Motors and Ford? They're buying trucks, and uh, these SUVs, and especially these small SUVs. But you know, Bill, back in the day, and I'll, and I'm going to challenge you here for a second. Mm-hmm. We would, uh, we you may remember when I mean cars used to have full full frames on them. Right. And and then they went to these, uh, we'll just say unibody cars that have no frames. Well, what is a car nowadays? Uh, trucks, of course, have frames. But what do you think is under all these new smaller SUVs? That's got to be the, uh, is it the unibody? Correct. Oh, interesting. So, so in other words, they're more car-like than truck-like. Right. So so when you when you buy a Suburban, yo, sure, that's a big, heavy frame truck. But if you buy a Ford Escape, for example, or a uh, GM equivalents, uh, these vehicles are, are do not have frames under them. So, you know, the definition of what is a car versus what is a truck, I think, is very interesting because yeah. uh, these are very car-like. They're not truck-like. They're car-like. Mm-hmm. So, so what do people want? Well, they first of all, they want – when you get out of a car, most people, when the seat's above your hip height, it's easy to get in and out of, especially if you're older. Right. Number two – you sit a little higher off the ground. You have a better better vision and command of the road, see, seeing things like you do in a truck. So people have gravitated towards these, these uh, we'll just say, uh, ergonomically better things. And, of course, from a storage standpoint, most of these have hatchbacks in the back. Rather than a trunk, you open up the hatchback and put, you put a lot of your stuff in there a lot easier. So people are preferring these vehicles, and General Motors is catching on to this. They're saying, you know what, we need to make a change here. So then there's General Motors' strategic direction. Uh, a few months, oh, actually about six weeks ago, the Trump administration put out some rules about delaying the MPG change and the CAFE requirements mm-hmm. uh, that were put in by the previous administration. Uh, we were supposed to be at 55 MPG by 2025, which, of course, is physically impossible. It was never going to make it. Right. But – but. Uh, the the current administration says, you know what, we want to adjust that and delay that. You know, there's only one car maker that said don't do that, and that was General Motors. Got it. So General Motors' strategic direction has been towards hybrids and electric cars. Uh, the Chevy Bolt, B-O-L-T, uh, is available today. It's reasonably priced. It's cheaper than a Tesla, and you can take it to a Chevy dealer and actually get it worked on. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a few people that have them locally, and uh, they love them. And uh, they're getting 130, 140 mile range out of these things uh, oh, in range. in summer and weather. So yeah, yeah. Uh, with the air conditioning running or the heat and the lights running, uh, you know, if you lease a car, how many miles a day can you drive? Right, right. About thirty. Mm-hmm. A ten a ten thousand five hundred mile lease is thirty miles a day. So if you got a hundred and thirty mile range, 
I think you can do okay with that on a daily basis. Sure, absolutely. It's interesting. And I, I mentioned uh, last hour that I heard you talking a few weeks ago. Didn't somebody announce that they were getting out of the sedan business a few weeks ago? Yep. And it wasn't yep. GM, was uh, And I, it was did, a, Ford, I yeah. did a whole piece on it, and we did an auto quip on it a few weeks back. Yeah. That's probably where you heard it. And, uh, yes, Ford, Ford said, hey, except for the Mustang, we're not making cars anymore. And uh, General Motors, uh, of course, I mean, again, they're all watching each other very carefully. Mm-hmm. But, Bill, your first point was the actual dead ringer uh, top shelf reason is they don't want to repeat past mistakes. Right. Um, they don't want to be selling cars that nobody wants to buy. Um, then they have to basically drop the price to get rid of them and lose their shirt. Um, these unfortunate plant closings, and, you know, and what we don't know is, is what's going to happen in the future with product and where they're going to make stuff. But when you when you talk about this, they're getting rid of 15% of their salaried workforce, uh, which are also going to get 20, get rid of 25% of their executives. So this is not just a, a plant closing or a uh, just a moving stuff around. Uh, that Oshawa plant up in Ontario is the one they're going to close. They're going to close their Baltimore operations parts plant in, uh, in Maryland. Uh, they're going to close their Warren transmission operations plant in southeast Michigan. Uh, these are all pretty big deals, and of course, uh, they're going to discontinue the Chevrolet Cruze. And what's interesting, they're going to get rid of the Chevy Volt, their first electric car. That's the VOLT. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's because I do believe that they've got much better product line coming out. They're also getting rid of the Buick LaCrosse, the Cadillac XTS, and the Cadillac CT6. And these are all models that are they're, they're, they're not selling very well. According to General Motors, they have about 1,500 employees in the Detroit plant, 1,600 in Lordstown, Ohio, which is another plant they're going to close, 2,500 up in Oshawa, which is going to be an absolute disaster for the people up in Ontario. But uh, when you look at the bottom line, General Motors is looking to save $4 billion in operation costs and about $1.5 billion in uh, uh, capital improvements that they will not have to make in these plants. So how do you, how do you react to the, to the president who is uh, who is critical of General Motors yesterday, saying, listen, uh, the federal government did a lot for you, uh, certainly rescued General Motors. Um, you, you, you should think this uh, over again before you get rid of employees and shut down plants in the United States. What, what's your take? Well, you know, the, the president is always looking out for, for, for the blue-collar worker. That seems to be his one of his hallmarks for his administration. So, his, you know, his, his comments on that does not surprise me. Um, he's gone after Ford and others for plants in Mexico. They brought jobs to the United States out of those countries. Um, obviously, uh, the Canadian our Canadian friends aren't going to be too happy either. But, you know, General Motors is going to have new product lines. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they take a, a plant like Youngstown, Ohio, and retool it for electric vehicles. Mm. But I think what, what they want to be able to do is renegotiate their contracts. I think they want to get rid of, their, their obviously, their operating costs. Uh, you know, again, the, the president is going to always say whatever he says. Yeah. But but he has a consistent uh, message about about keeping America jobs. So I'm not surprised at his message at all, and I'm not surprised what General Motors is doing. Uh, their stock went up yesterday, and it's about thirty six dollars a share right now. And I suspect the stockholders are going to like this a lot. Uh, so ultimately, as we said earlier, uh, this is preemptive. They're uh, they are trying to strategically take a, a course that will not put them back into financial trouble. That, that's correct, yeah. and and and, it, and and sadly, uh, you know, there's, you know, the word disrupts the disruptions in a lot of industries. Um, you know, these automated cars that are coming down the road, General Motors is playing a part in those. The whole transportation industry is being disrupted. Yeah. Um, you know, you've talked to 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 your uh, Gabby Cabby guy about what Uber and Lyft has done to the cab driving business, as an example. Well, Uber and Lyft can't wait to get into automated cars to get rid of the drivers altogether. Isn't this so, a uh, isn't this a sign of uh, what's to come? This is going to be a, a problem, even going further down the road. Uh, where take a look at a um, at a Remington Arms. Um, there used to be three thousand people working in that plant, and today they're producing probably as many or more guns, and they're doing it with under a thousand employees. Automation and robotics is really going to change the uh, the amount of uh, the number of, of workers that are needed in in manufacturing. That's going to be a real problem down the road. It, it really is, and and it's just like if you think of all the mill buildings in this community, mm-hmm. in Utica, New York Mills, Clark's Mills, 
all those old buildings, those were they they, they employed thousands of people at one time in, in textile business, which all, of course, went offshore, went other places. And the same things happened in most other kinds of manufacturing. For us to compete as a country, we've we've got to be able to to do better than countries that are paying people ten cents an hour. Yeah. Um, you know, we're 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 all heading towards fifteen dollars an hour in this country, and it, and people have to earn a living wage. Let's face it; otherwise, you can't afford to live. So, so the bottom line is that if if it you know when I was a kid, it took fifty something people to run a McDonald's. Right. They do it now with about twenty five. I was reading about a machine they invented that can flip the hamburgers for them. Yeah, and uh, but you worked at McDonald's, right? You you were a McDonald's employee. No, I worked there across the street, but, oh, I, but, you did. but I had You're a lot a of friends King. that worked there. Okay. I used to have the toughest time when it, when I first started flipping the burger without ripping the 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 burger apart. It was the hardest part of flipping that burger because it is a, it's a thin it's burger. Very thin, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, so what happens is down the road, maybe they'll only need 15 people yeah, to run a yeah. McDonald's or 16. I mean, if you've gone, you've gone in and seen the kiosk, right, where you, you, sure. you punch it up and you get your own stuff. So. So they're automating as well. So, yeah, they'll pay $15 an hour. There'll just be 10 less people doing yep, it. Yep. Uh, uh, this is where coming. all of this is going. And even in my business at AAA, uh, we're, we have, we have, we're testing road service vehicles. I mean, not here locally, but we're testing them in California to, to, put, to put instant charges into electric cars. Because when they run out of gas, they still run out of gas. Right. Uh, very interesting. Uh, certainly, it'll be uh, interesting to see where General Motors goes. But I, I think you're right. I think the, you're going to watch their stock rise today because of this move. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and yeah. it's a very sad day for all those workers. Yeah. And uh, and of course, General Motors is getting rid of 25 percent of their executives. Uh, that's a you know, those are those are basically white collar people, and mm-hmm. uh, that's a whole lot of executives to get rid of. Uh, Ed Welch, uh, AAA, and, of course, uh, Auto Talk at WIBX on Saturday mornings. Thanks for the uh, the quick update. We appreciate it. All right, uh, John, here we go. You'll have seven seconds to answer this. It's your chance to win $100 from the Hobika Law Firm. Are you ready? Yes. Here's your question. Louis Chevrolet was co-founder of the Chevrolet Motor Company. He was also known to have two professions. He was an automobile engineer and was also employed as what? Ready? Go. He was an engineer and a what? Uh, how about an answer? I didn't get that answer because the buzzer covered you up. What was your answer? Airplane technician. Airplane technician. He was a race car driver. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my guess. Back in like the early 1900s. My guess was a bartender. A bartender. That, that would have worked too. Hey, I want to do this for you. We'll give you a jar of It's a Utica Thing sauce, the Riggy sauce. Also, um, from the 72 Tavern and Grill um, at the Adirondack Bank Center, we'll give you a $25 gift card. All right. Which is. Thank you very much. As great food. You can go before the game, you can do lunch or dinner anytime. Uh, great to watch games and all of that. Andrew, take care of him. Uh, these will be here tomorrow. Make it to make it Thursday, because I, I still have to pick up those cards. But uh, the seventy two Tavern and Grill, we've been there often. The food is great. The tater yeah. tots, the tuna tartare, I love it all. Good stuff. And the uh, and the it's a Utica thing uh, bottled sauce. I think makes believe it or not is a great gift. You know, you take turkey joints, you wrap them up, you give them as a gift. You take Saranac, their uh, their twelve beers of winter, wrap it up. It serves as a gift. I'm telling you, this uh, this Riggy sauce, especially for somebody who isn't from here and doesn't get to enjoy Utica food, the Riggy sauce is really good. It's available at Chinantry's Price Chopper, Utica Pizza Company, um, at Wegmans, um, also available at Charlie's Pizza. It's a Utica thing. A Utica Pizza Company, by the way, which I... Uh, in Whitesboro, which yeah. is new in Whitesboro. Well, you said Charlie's, right? And Charlie's. Oh, it's still Charlie's in some mm-hmm. places. Oh, okay. and, uh, Washington Mills and in North Utica. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had the Utica Pizza Company yeah, Saturday. It was really good. So I have an interesting thought. I, Something must be done. People in groups who claim to be not radical, not saying crazy things, but conservative leaning, aren't saying racist things, crazy things, off the wall things, claim they continue to be banned on Twitter because they're just conservative. So I think. You're going to see a response from Trump at some point along the way. I understand it's his number one connection to the American people. People can You can just send a message to the president. But I, I wonder if he at some point is going to 
either get off Twitter or limit Twitter as a way to say stop banning conservatives. Well, that would be a tr- that would be a uh, a response, but to to ban Twitter or to no, no uh, not, shut not down that he would ban CNN Twitter. or uh, some of these accusations to regulate in a way um, would be Im- imposing uh, undue restrictions, unconstitutional restrictions on the Constitution, obviously. But you're saying if he were to leave Twitter, that would be a huge blow. Stop banning conservatives. Yeah, yeah that'd be a or big Or we're going to leave you. Yeah, basically. Uh, state trooper pulled over a van going 85 in a 70 mile, in a 70 mile, uh, p- mile per hour zone. The husband explained that his wife was in labor. So the trooper called for an EMS and then helped deliver the baby on the side of the highway. I've heard these stories where people wow. are speeding down the highway and then all of a sudden you find out the there's a pregnant woman inside. She's delivering the baby. I feel you. lucky and blessed to have been at the right place at the right time. She was smiling and healthy as can be. She's in labor? He said, hey, my wife's uh, having a baby. I said, okay, well, we're going to do this right here, me and you. So I contacted EMS. Rapers, uh, baby delivery. 1018 traffic. Got them on the way, grabbed my gloves, blanket. It was interesting. It was scary. I just tried to do the best I could do with things I had seen on TV and things I had heard. Relieved that everything went good. For so many years, I've seen a lot of death. To be able to actually be part of the process that brings the life into this world is absolutely amazing. Uh, That's nice. A school bus driver in Buffalo. This is a really interesting story. Uh, Pulled a hit and run last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So he hit a parked car on a snowy street. And then drove off. But the sixth grade girl um, that he dropped off left, walked up to the vehicle that the bus driver hit and left a note explaining what had happened. She even included a drawing of the bus with screaming kids inside. She didn't leave her name, but the college kid who owned the car posted the note on Twitter, and it went viral. His name is Andrew Spit, uh, Sipowitz. Andrew Sipowitz here. Pretty much what I saw was the front driver's side was smashed in. Well, my first thought was thank God for the note, because without the note, I wouldn't have any idea of what happened. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty good picture. She even had the uh, detail of the students in the back. And then my next thought was I just wanted to find whoever wrote the note and thank them. I thought maybe get 100, 200 likes, but within the first hour, I think I was over 1,000. And the teacher said immediately he knew who it was. So I've been in contact with that teacher and we're trying to set up something, maybe go to the school and thank the person. She felt like she had to do the right thing and I'm very grateful for that. I was very impressed. The uh, note had a ton of detail, more than I could have imagined. It happened at about 5 p.m. I wasn't home at the time. One of my roommates was driving by and noticed the bus stopped. Like It looked extremely close to my car. So uh, the news picked it up, and a local news reporter in Buffalo read the kid's note, uh, typos and all, uh, and listen to this. It reads, if you're wondering what happened to your car, bus 449 hit your car. It stops here every day to drop me off. She was trying to pull off and hit the car. She hit and run. She tried to veer over and squeeze through but couldn't. She made a dent, and I saw what happened. Well, there you go. How old is that child? Sixth grade. Oh, sixth grade. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, NASA InSight spacecraft landed on Mars yesterday. Do we realize, we talked about this earlier, do you realize how big this is? This is enormous. You're not impressed. It's enormous. I think it's just a result of everything else that's going on that makes me not care that we're on Mars. Okay. I thought it was a big deal. I, I do think it's a very it's a, big deal. Andrew, I'm, I'm just going to talk to you. I'll ignore him. <laughs> I think it's a big step in modern science. <laughs> one step. It's one small step for... Sounds like a job yeah. for the Space Force. Yeah. Um, yeah. It might be. Uh, by the way, uh, Pence is really... Vice President Pence is really big on this. Called I told you. NASA, uh, not the Space Force. Oh, okay. I get that. Okay. He also likes Tebow. Shh. That's Come on. right. He does. Uh, he's big in NASA. He's big in space uh, exploration. And... Uh, called uh, the NASA scientists yesterday and congratulated them. It was a big deal. Uh, Just think about it. It traveled 300 million miles. It has uh, the ability now to drill into the surface, find out what's below, and figure out if Mars ever supported life. Um, Here's the moment that it touched down. This really was a very big... And it's a... It literally is... The precision is the... It's like putting a uh, throwing a pin and allowing the pin to go through a pinhole. That's how precise this had to be yesterday. Wow! Here they are. Thirty meters, twenty meters, 
17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. <laughs> they were high-fiving. They were doing, like, football moves and, you know, the special little handshakes. It's like when they got the Apollo 13 people back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, that was a big deal. Uh, NASA's, uh, they have an app on uh, on Apple TV, and I'm sure it's on Roku, and you're able to watch. I don't watch it every day, but yesterday with this thing going on, I turned the TV on. I thought it was kind of exciting. Uh, okay, Manaski's not impressed. No, uh, I, Trump, I, I, <laughs> Trump did a, President Trump did a, a rally in uh, Mississippi last night, which is the d- birthplace of Elvis. This is what he had to say about that. I shouldn't say this. You'll say I'm very conceited because I'm not. But other than the blonde hair, when I was growing up, they said I looked like Elvis. You see that? Did you believe it? I always consider that a great compliment. A new climate change report came out, and the president uh, gave this opinion on the climate change report. Mr. President, have you read the climate report yet? I've seen it. Uh, I've read some of it, and it's fine. But they they say economic impact could be devastating. I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No, no, I don't believe it. Right now, we're at the cleanest we've ever been, and that's very important to me. But if we're clean, but every other place on Earth is dirty, that's not so good. He's right, but he, again, his portrayal of this is not, you know, it's, it's we, have, we have just this white, clean, absolutely pristine counter, and everyone else is filthy with rats yeah. crawling yeah. all over. It's, that's just not exactly the case. I do think we that the United States does a lot more than a lot of other countries, but it better than we've ever been, better than ever. Like before, we we invest in cars and the industrial revolution. You think we're cleaner now than we were then? Just some of the things he says just are just nonsensical. And people are screaming at the radio right now because they hate me because I said that. But just think if Obama said that, you you would drive off of the road. You would drive off the road. Uh, this is how uh, are you a Guns and Roses fan? Uh, this is how much Axl Rose has changed. He got sick on Sunday before a show, throwing up all day, had to get an IV of fluids. So he told the crowd instead of canceling the concert, he'd do the best he could do. He made it through 20 of the 28 songs wow. before he had to call it quit. Quits. Before he had to call it quits. I'm not sure I would do that. Although the the, the radio rule is always, Bren, uh, there's always a garbage can. If you got to throw up, throw up in the garbage can. You do not take a day off. That was until uh, the spread you got of these at things. a building with that, no windows? Right, no windows in this building, no circulation. And everybody in the building is like, do not come in sick, <laughs> okay? I understand you're trying to be a hero here. Do not come in sick because I don't want to catch it. In anyway, the show today, we're making sure everybody's healthy. Here's Axl Rose uh, sick performance. I'm having on IVs and a bunch of injections because I got sick today. I've been throwing up for about the last five hours, so... Instead of cancel, I'm going to do the best show we can for you. And he did. Uh, I don't he got believe through it. 20 of the 28 songs. Some say he just wanted to leave earlier. Mark in New Hartford. Hello, Mark. Responding to Manaski's comment. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to make a clarification on um, as far as the environment was concerned and how uh, we're at the best we've been. And it's, it's prob- probably pretty close to the truth. I mean, just take our local area. Uh, the Adirondacks at the turn of the century were could have been nothing more than a bunch of potato fields because most of it had been cleared. And as far as Boston and Massachusetts and all those areas uh, where you have the row coming out of the uh, social con- consciousness, uh, those streams and, and uh, that whole area down there was nothing but a cesspool of contaminants uh, due to runoff and uh, the Industrial Revolution. Well, they're, they're, another good point is the um, uh, to make your point would be the uh, the Erie Canal, the Barge Canal, uh, has, has been cleaned up tremendously. However, the problem, Mark, to though, say is, that it's cleaner than before that, though the, the canal is definitely cleaner than. It's cleaner I don't than think before he's the canal about existed, before. though. I'm talking about, but he's saying the cleanest well, it's ever been. Well, you can't say that. Well, because it was probably well, apparently you can. Apparently, you can. <laughs> In the 1800s, it might have been a little cleaner. You know. Well, Except yeah, for all the, didn't have it. But I think what he's saying is you've got to put the hyperbole a little bit aside, and he's saying it, it's it's the cleanest it's been in a but long time. F- okay, go ahead. Go but ahead. that's never what the president says. He yeah. always says it's the cleanest right. ever. Right, yeah. and By the way, it's the cleanest under me ever. It's the best under me, which he normally yeah. says. The only Biggest other thing, crowds ever. The only other thing, Mark, the problem is, the, uh, is where you get into the large population centers where 
you know, L.A. and places where the population is higher than it's ever been, the smog is a real problem because of all the, the, the and certainly China, which, which really is the president's point, right? Uh, places like yeah. China are, 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 are not performing and we're being exactly. restricted. Yeah. So, okay. Exactly. Fair enough. Not pulling, not pulling their weight. But, not uh, pulling their weight. Thank you. All right, Mark. Thanks, man. You know, Drive carefully out there. To follow up on that note quickly, uh, I believe France is going through something. I know Rush was talking about this yesterday. And their gas prices are through the roof because they're still part of that deal. I don't. Know, we'll, well, I'll try to. They're get putting you some taxes more info. on. They're putting additional taxes on fuel. Uh, Utica FC, uh, Utica City FC, debuting this Sunday. We're going to have the goaltender, one of the goaltenders, coming in on WYBX. I was just thinking about uh, Andrew and I were talking about what do you get your parents for for the holidays? An air fryer. An air fryer. I got to tell you, if you, Rick Lewis. Good morning. How are you? I heard that earlier. The air fryer. I got to tell you, it, it, it sounds great. I got to tell you. But how much is it? Nine ninety five. I don't Boom, know. Easy payments. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah. But if you act now, we'll, we'll give you us. a free spatula along with that air fryer <laughs> and tongs. Um, I, I I'll never forget the uh, so worst gifts. I we talked about how I got my wife a, a faucet once for for Christmas, which. Didn't go over well. Uh, but it was a nice faucet. And these faucets yeah. aren't cheap. Well, sometimes. But it, was, it was worse the time that for my father's birthday, I because um, we had just built a house. I was young. And we had just built a house up on uh, Vickerman Hill, south of Mohawk, in between Mohawk and Richfield Springs. And I was just a kid. So I had been making a little bit of money on the side. And I bought him like eight loads of topsoil. And the dump truck just kept coming. So he came home from work, and there were eight giant piles of topsoil all over the front yard. Uh, I hadn't thought about it, but you got to rake that crap out after you're done. Thanks, so, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> was that a good one or a bad it one? It was bad. He was not happy. Appreciated the thought, but he was not happy. Yeah, I must isn't say. the thought what really counts? It's the thought that matters. Yeah, I, I did try to tell him that, but. Yeah. <laughs> to this day. Remember that time you gave me the topsoil? That was good. Good thing it wasn't manure. <laughs> to help your plants grow, you know? Oh, yeah. come on, Dad. I'm just trying to help. Yeah. Uh, Renee's standing by right now uh, from, actually, from down. In, uh, how's the weather up on top of Vickerman Hill right now, Renee? Well, I hear the uh, the road is clear, but it's not clear from the driveway to my house. Yeah. it's uh, <laughs> From it, the road to my house. So the higher elevations, uh, everything that was rain turned to, to snow and Kind of wet, slippery snow. Yeah, snow. it's really wet. It's heavy. I just went out to try to attempt to get out of the driveway, and it's it's really heavy and thick and wet. So. You need more topsoil on that driveway. That'll, that'll yeah. fix it. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> uh, okay, Renee. So what do you guys have? This is for uh, the village of Mohawk. There's an event that's going on, and uh, I know Laurie at Doggy Styles and uh, the group down there putting this all together. What's happening? Yes, it is what they do every year. It's a Christmas tree lighting ceremony. It's in Weller Park right down there in the village of Mohawk. This year they're doing it a little bit earlier because they want everybody to enjoy the trees a little longer. We usually do it like three weeks into the, into the month. Um, it's a start off to the holiday season. Uh, basically, uh, Lori purchases the trees, and then businesses and individuals purchase the trees from them. All the proceeds go to the library. Nice. Okay. Uh, they have the tree stands already in place in the park. All you need to do once you purchase a tree is to get an outdoor electrical cord, decorations, lights. And over the years, uh, Lori got involved with this maybe four or five years ago because when they first started, the library first started, they only had a few trees. And since she got involved last year, she had 51. Wow. And it's, it, yeah, it's a beautiful site. How much does um, it? And not much, only do, yeah. I'm sorry, not only do businesses purchase the trees, but individuals do also to, like, memorialize yeah, maybe somebody that nice. they lost in the past or maybe do it towards a cause that's, that's close to their heart. Um, and they have fun with it. They really do. And, you know, they decorate, like, some businesses, like, with our business, we use body uh parts for the body shop, mm, okay, you know, yep. parts with cars, you know, mm -hmm. decorate it with that. And, and a lot of companies have fun with it. Uh, how much does it cost to sponsor a tree and how many are left by the way? Um, I believe she has about 28 left. Okay. Um, you, it's $30 a tree. Uh, the proceeds go towards the library association and, uh, 
The tree lighting is December 2nd. Okay, so it's uh, coming They're going to have yeah. a luminary lit walking path, holiday dance with the Happy Hags Dance Troupe, Christmas caroling with the Mohawk Reformed Church, cookies, hot cocoa, characters from Frozen, and a visit from Santa. All that begins at 5 o'clock, and the tree lighting starts right at 6. Probably. And when is the uh, the second? That would be uh, Sunday, right? Sunday. Oh, so it's coming Sunday. right up. Sunday the 2nd. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, how do people, uh, if somebody wants to uh, do a tree, uh, how do they How do they do it? Absolutely. Well, they can call Lori at 315-717-6151, or they can just stop into Doggy Styles Salon. Okay. She does a great job in uh, uh, grooming the uh, the dogs, and she did oh, ours she for does. many years. And she does a great yeah. job at community events and yep. always getting involved. And with us doing it, with them doing it a little bit earlier this year, um, you know, we just need a little bit of help to get some extra trees sold. All right. Very nice. It's Doggy Styles in the Village of Mohawk. And, Renee, thanks so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All Have right. a great day and good you voice too. singing, I heard. Yeah. Okay. That was pretty <laughs> sexy. Pretty sexy. Yeah, that was nice. All right, thank That's you. Right. All right, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. And I graduated high school with uh, with Lori Shell. So um, we were all we all lived on top of the hill, up on Vickerman Hill. So, all right, Rick Lewis. Good morning. How are you? I'm just fine. I'm just fine. I I was driving out there today. And, it's nasty. Well, you see, I get it's it. not I that it bad. I, I mean, I, I mean, I it, it. it's slippery. But remember, it is winter. I mean, it's it not, not winter. It's fall. Oh. This isn't even winter this yet. the way it used to be back in the day. When you climb uphill yeah. every year. Yeah. What do you, you know what? <laughs> One of the biggest Christmas songs is actually a Thanksgiving song. Did you know that? What is it? Which one? Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells oh. is Thanksgiving? Yeah, Jingle yeah, Bells is that. a Thanksgiving song. And they were singing Jingle Bells to the sleigh, dancing to the snow. Not because it wasn't snowing. So they were on their way to right. uh, Thanksgiving. Where? Yeah. Okay. So were they see? going to Grandma's house, or is that another? Oh, one? they were going to some relatives. Oh, wasn't okay. that Little Red Riding Hood? <laughs> that might have been. Grandma's house. Oh, okay. have, ooh, a different my, type of day. Guys, Grandma, <laughs> Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Was also a <laughs> that was a big song. one too. That was very sentimental. Send them back. Very sexy, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, there, uh, Rick Lewis, and we've just confirmed that you're going to perform, and you have a group you're going to perform on our uh, Christmas Eve show, which yeah. this year falls on Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's what I was checking out. I said, yeah. "What is the Christmas?" Despite Eve show? the objections of uh, the staff here, everybody, <laughs> was, yeah, not all that happy with it, but. 6 a.m. till 12 noon on Christmas Eve yeah. morning. Yeah, and I'm allowed to be on the show again after my yes. last... Uh, well, you had a debacle well. a couple of years ago. I don't know what the hell happened, but... Uh, oh, I recorded Literally, it. I we don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys have been out partying all night on the way in. It might be the... Uh, might be part of what happened. Either way. Uh, all right, Rick Lewis, what are you doing out there in Rome? Well, uh, today is uh, Giving Tuesday, and it's a big okay. day for the... Uh, in the nonprofit world um, where they look too. It's it's kind of an I guess odd it thing. is giving too. So you've got Black Friday, Small Business Saturday. Somebody said couch. Was it Herb Phillipson's that was celebrating Couch Sunday? Couch Sunday. I don't know what that is. You're on the couch. <laughs> yeah. By this point, you're tired. You're on the couch. Yeah. And there are still deals. And then and then Monday was uh, Cyber Monday. Cyber. And then today and giving is Tuesday. Giving Tuesday. And, and and that and you know what? That's kind of good. It's at the end there to remind people. Uh, you guys, this is really not all about buying stuff and sure. getting stuff <clears throat> and. And it's really a big day of – it's sort of a day of awareness because a lot of times there aren't fundraising activities people right, are doing. Right. And, and actually one of the things that – well, the thing that I'm doing with the uh, Capitol tonight at uh, Copper City Brewing, it's it's an event where we're bringing people the opportunity to come in and do some interviews and plug what they're doing in the holiday season. Okay, cool. And um, – we take that and we chop it into segments for social media. We also play it before our films in the uh, Cinema nice. Capital okay. Capitol Theater. <clears throat> and we have music performed by uh, the band Pocket Change. And they're doing it for just because they're doing it. Yeah. And we're videotaping it. And we're going to be making a videos to, uh, cool. to, to mix in with it. So. Uh, and that is, uh, that is tonight you're doing it's that. Tonight, tonight. Yeah, it's tonight okay. from 6 to 9 o'clock. All right. And... Um, I think they're having a Bloody Mary special. I don't know. I like that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> As an added incentive. So if you're in the, uh, if you're having some sort of, you're doing some sort of a fundraiser, you're doing, you're well, trying to raise you, money. You you're know what? I will to tell do you this. Something positive. Yeah, it's it, and this is not a fundraiser as much right. as we're just bringing people in the opportunity to get their message out. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people in the media. Um, Take, they take it for granted how easy it is to, I'll just whip this off and throw it online. Well, most people have a cell phone, which great, get great pictures. I've sure. made entire <clears throat> things out of them. Yeah. But, you know, it also takes a, 
ability to edit it, to shoot it properly, Mm -hmm. and to get it out there. And so we put things into a kind of a professional uh, format. We put it on, like I said, we put it on our screens and we send it out, and we do this all the time. Very nice. And this time we can get people's messages themselves. You get people's messages, uh, you get their messages out, and that helps them raise the money they're trying to raise for exactly, good cause. Exactly, exactly. Right. And, and uh, it, it, it works out pretty good. We do a weekly uh, announcement for Rome, New York Entertainment, every mm-hmm. weekend. Okay. And we're going we're gonna, to... Whatever ones we get today that are talking about an event happening on the 14th, we'll be able to use those instead of our normal cool. uh, uh, right. Mackenzie. Test. So come out at what time tonight? It's 6 o'clock till 9 o'clock. Okay. And speaking of special announcements, uh, Utica's Conkling School has just been closed due to a power outage. It's okay. the only <clears throat> Utica school that is not weather-related. Conkling School in Utica is closed due to a power outage. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, all right, what are you going to do, by the way? What song are you going to do on our Christmas Eve show? Uh, well, is this with your group that had the music videos way back in the day that we remember? Rick, remember we watched Rick. Lewis's yeah, you were. Old, uh, what was the name of your group? It was yeah. the um, No Budget Orchestra. No, way back when you way dressed b- up and uh, remember you had the video college, that were showing. College. Us. Oh, oh, geez, that was uh, Roger Wilco. Roger Wilco. Yeah. yeah, I have a CD. I think of Roger Wilco. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we had a CD and a yeah. record and yeah. you know, that cool, stuff. awesome. So what are you going to do? Our, our well. This is a concept piece, and it's okay. called Little Drummer Girl. Little Drummer Girl. <laughs> it's politically oh, I like correct, it. I like and it. you'll find out exactly why. It is quite interesting. Wait, How <laughs> in the world have we forgotten about Little Drummer? I mean, it's so gender-specific. Yeah. I'm surprised we haven't turned it into a Little Drummer person. Yeah, well, that that's too political. It correct. is. You're right. We're, we're you're being... Right. You know, last time you were in, I believe this was the performance, you had me on the drums. Yeah, you played yeah. the drums. I can assume we're, I'm being replaced, right? We've got a little drummer girl, I would we have imagine. a little drummer girl. I'd imagine and, I'm relieved. Right, my, right. my guess is it has to be better than what you did two years ago. Well, <laughs> only because of interest and inflation. Only because of interest. All right. All right, Rick. We always appreciate it. Thank you, man. Okay, talk to you. Uh, okay, so that's tonight, by the way. Get tonight, out there and... Tonight, from 6 till 9 at Copper City Brewing Company, it's... Uh, Giving it's a Giving Tuesday concert we're calling it Lights Camera Music, and uh, we're looking for hey you know people if you have memories and um, things you want to share about the holiday season we'll we're looking for doing that too we're gonna have cameras rolling around Rome is uh, Rome is on fire with uh, with the the, uh, the rink won't go in until next year it looks like but. The uh, all the lights and the displays, all the there's some real things happening. Yeah, there. and and I didn't know this. They have this this big uh, Christmas display on the side of one of the parking garages. Somebody said it's from Trinkus Manor. There's Trinkus yeah, Manor, sure. and and they have also they they got the lights from the was it RCIL? The, yes, the, the, uh, Wonderland, Wonderland of lights. lights. They got those lights too. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so they got the old Trinkus lights, yeah. which I think some were either rewired or Yeah, I think there's been, a, there's been a lot of refurbishment going on there. And then uh, they have the old Wonderland yeah. of lights. Last night, there was the coolest show on ABC. And apparently it's a series. It's back on next Monday night. And it is, uh, they call it Light Wars or something like that. And it's... Uh, it goes, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. my God, I love that show. It was the coolest. <laughs> so you go to people's houses and they put on these displays, these light displays... Like, I've never seen anything quite like this. Like the this. Griswolds or, or even bigger? Oh. Bigger. Yeah. And, and next week is the mega, the mega Christmas lights war. <laughs> so this week was just incredible. I mean, they had, there the one, there was one kid that did a, a computerized light show, and it, and it had uh, explosives, and uh, uh, it looked like <laughs> it looked like it was more impressive than Disney. What is I mean, Nightmare at the North Pole? It, can you imagine kind of being explosives? Can, imagine being the neighbors. I like, know, right? Yeah, next really, door, we're all saying know? this is great, and the neighbors like, get no, out yeah, of here. please leave. <laughs> But meanwhile, yeah. you can all of these displays are so bright you probably can see it from the International Space Station. I yeah. mean, it's it's that crazy. But it's on Monday nights. It'll be on again next Monday night on ABC. Worth worth watching. I think I kind of enjoyed it. Nine Syracuse football players have made the All ACC team. Nine of them. Okay. Dungey only made the third team. So does that surprise you? It kind of does, and it kind of doesn't. Here's I the, think yeah, I think part of his problem is he is in your face, and I think that he's not liked by opponents. Yeah, I think he's not liked. I actually went and looked at the quarterback stats from some other teams, and, and to be fair, uh, there are a handful, five or six ACC quarterbacks with better quarterback ratings, 
or maybe who have more touchdown passes than he does and actually uh, you know, lower interceptions, depending on who you're talking about. What puts him over the edge, though, is he's got 15 or 16 rushing touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. So I, I thought so he did you, get I, snubbed a bit. I, 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 over the weekend, uh, during the Boston College game, uh, the announcers were talking, well, especially the color commentator, talking a lot, I forgot who it was, talking a lot about how um, he feels there's room for Dungy in the NFL um, and believes that while it isn't always pretty, he finds a way to get uh, to get stuff done, and the uh, the the his running game. I yeah. mean, I think he he oftentimes will be up there with with running backs when it comes to performance in certain games that Syracuse has had this year. So you just you, he only makes the third team. Yeah, uh, I, I, I do find that hard to believe. Like he got snubbed a bit. I was surprised to see that, and then I said, "All right, well, let me go see who in the ACC does what." So this kid from NC State, Ryan Finley, he's got 21 touchdowns, eight picks, 150 is his quarterback rating. You got uh, Trevor Lawrence, Clemson quarterback, 22 and four. It's his touchdown to pick ratio. That's a great ratio. His rating is 156. Bryce Perkins of Virginia, who I'm not, I'm not familiar with him at all, 22 and nine with a 146 quarterback rating. There are some guys that you might not have even heard of who statistically outperformed Dungy just yep. at the quarterback throwing the ball, mm-hmm. okay? But when you factor in what he does on the ground, I mean, he's got he's got over 30 touchdowns, I think, this year. And, and that's incredible. I think third team is a definite snub. I'm not saying all-conference. I'm not saying first team. But third team seemed like yeah, a snub yeah. to me. Uh, we have a big debut home opener for the Utica City FC. Uh, soccer is alive, and this is going to be really an incredible debut coming up this Sunday at the Adirondack Bank Center. We'll talk to Andrew Coughlin, who is uh, the goalie, and that's coming up at WYBX. This weekend, the Utica uh, City FC uh, opens soccer at the Adirondack Bank Center. Andrew Coughlin is in his first season in Utica after playing three with the Syracuse Silver Knights. He starred for Baldwinsville High School prior to playing for both Syracuse University and Canisius College. Um, Coughlin is the goalkeeper's coach for Syracuse University, and he gains uh, trains regularly in the offseason with Toronto FC goalkeeper Alex Bono. And he is on the line right now, Andrew Coughlin. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. So, um, well, welcome to Utica. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So the Adirondack Bank Center is cool with all the updates. And from I haven't seen this yet, but I'm told, and I have seen some pictures, it looks awesome with the soccer field laid down. Yeah, no, uh, I think the atmosphere is going to be unbelievable with the new turf that they got. Um, you know, it really pops uh, in the arena. And I think that, you know, come Sunday, uh, that place is going to be rocking. So, all right. So, tell us a little bit about uh, about what your your what the competition you're going to be facing this year, and uh, and how well you guys how you think you guys are going to do. Well, I think personally, um, the Eastern Division of the MASL is one of the toughest divisions in the whole entire league. Uh, you have the defending champions, three time defending champions, Baltimore uh, Blast, uh, as well as you know our team, which um, is kind of a mixture of a core group of the Syracuse Silver Knights from last year and, and a handful of quality uh, players that we brought in over the off season to kind of help us compete this year, uh, as well as a new team from Toronto, which is going to be, um, you know, uh, they have a, a bunch of good um, ex MLS players who play for their roster. And, uh, and then obviously the Harrisburg heat who, who are always a, a, a good um a good team to, to compete against. But I think we're going to fare pretty well. I think that uh, Coach Hall and, and uh, the ownership group has put together a, a team that, you know, will not only put out a good product on the field, but, but is, is put together to, to try to win an ASL championship. Um, and I think that's the end goal, uh, honestly, for this season. And if you've not seen uh, arena action, it is really fast, which is very cool, Andrew. And there's a, and there's an actual limited time, which I know we always get confused about. Uh, you know, one of the big things that we talked to a lot of the Comets players, you know, you know former and uh, and current players, about the atmosphere at the Adirondack Bank Center. You had a black and blue exhibition game where you were playing your teammates, and it seemed like a huge crowd. How much of that uh, will impact your team's performance and and going forward to this opening game against the defending champions? 
Well, the crowd plays a huge factor in, in the indoor game just because it is so much fast-paced. Um, and, and the way that you know Coach Hall puts us out to play, our, our style is kind of a blue-collar, uh, nitty-gritty, physical. Um, we're a physical team, and so uh, the crowd feeds off that, and then the energy that they bring in just inspires us to, to keep going. And, and um, you know, you'll see, as you saw, uh, from the from the scrimmage the other day, we try to get the crowd involved as much as we can uh, because we know that having that that extra um, you know boost from them kind of really helps, uh, especially when it comes down to to the end in the fourth quarter, uh, trying to grind out some wins. Hey Andrew, with the uh, in college athletics, um, especially when you're talking Division One, it is uh, really demanding to uh, to be a college athlete. How do you handle both um, as a coach? For uh, for Syracuse and a, a player on this team, is it a lot of travel back and forth, or or are there gaps in the in the college season where it allows you this opportunity? Well, uh, fortunately for me, the indoor season um, is kind of right at the end of the college season, so uh, there's not too much overlap. Um, but uh, you know, for instance, we started training um, for Utica, and we were Syracuse was still in the national tournament, so there was a little bit of conflict there, but. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really, it's enjoyable. Like, uh, I, I can't complain. I get to, I get to coach soccer for a living and then I get to play soccer for a living. So I'm doing what I love every day. Um, so it, it's really a great experience for me. Okay. Well, listen, uh, opening night is this Sunday and you can go to Utica, it's Utica city com is the uh, website and you can grab tickets. And uh, of course this is going to be a big opener this Sunday. We appreciate you taking the time, Andrew. Yeah, I look forward to seeing everybody there on Sunday. Thanks. All right, good luck. Thanks so much. Uh, Andrew yes, Andrew Coughlin, uh, not only playing for Utica FC, but uh, Utica City FC, but um, coaching for Syracuse University. All right, Andrew, you, speaking of songs, had a chance to see a movie. Yes. And I was very excited to see it, and it was a whole family affair. Mom, stepdad, my sisters, and Bo- I. Bohemian Rhapsody. It was awesome. And I, I kind of liked that I didn't know much about Freddie Mercury going into the movie. I didn't either, to be honest with you. And so it was really kind of, you know, were, even though a lot of it was probably made were, up. Were you bothered by the teeth a little bit? The, no. I almost felt like they went just a slight sliver, like a sliver too far with the teeth. It was, I think, a, a, a crutch for the actor, who did a phenomenal job, yeah. but it was almost like he was uh, intentionally trying to yeah. emphasize the teeth. But then again, I, I watched... Oh, I don't know what you did, but I went and watched the movie. Yeah. Loved it. Came home, got on my Apple TV and brought up YouTube and started watching actual video of Queen and could not believe how close yeah, they almost really identical. were. Yeah. In the sense that they, the only difference was they obviously probably for the movie had time constraints and, and whatnot, but they cut um crazy little thing called Love out of the Live Aid concert portion of the movie but it was pretty much the same thing and the reason i had gone to watch is my mom said i remember watching this live he did though uh, he did crazy little love crazy little thing called love uh, in the movie yeah oh okay yeah. i must have missed it, it was, was in late. we saw the late showing mm-hmm. but yeah even the because i was the... surprised I, I i was surprised because i didn't know that he played guitar he was a brilliant musician right. and a brilliant musician really a genius when you think about what he accomplished and if all that movie is true and i believe much of it is the timeline's a little off. Mm-hmm. There are a few events, obviously, that were made up for the movie. But um, he really, it was his vision that uh, that is what struck gold in that band. Yeah, and, and the, they kind of always had each other's back. But they also kind of needed each other. One other thing about the Live Aid concert, just to talk about the accuracy of the actual concert. And that's true. They stole, they stole the show. Right. When Live Aid occurred back whenever that was. The... Even down to the details of like the Pepsi and beer cups mm-hmm. on the piano, where <laughs> to the exact count and you know the, the little uh, kiss that he made to the camera and everything, it was it was really cool. And the kiss to the camera was actually a kiss to his mother. Right. Um, he had seen his mother before. At least that's what the the movie says. But so you liked it? I did. I loved the yeah. movie, and I didn't realize really uh, you know all of the the back stabbing with the one guy without giving too much away and kind of a little peek into Freddie Mercury's uh, life and his relationship with that Mary woman. It was a phenomenal film. And yeah. the and the, the guitarist from Queen, Brian, I can't think of his last name, had come out recently and said that the actor probably deserves an Oscar for his portrayal of Freddie yeah. Mercury. Yeah, I thought he did a great job. You're adding something? 
No, I just wanted to say I when I saw the previews come out, Brian May, I think. Brian May, thank out. you. Yes, he came uh, out. the The actual Brian May said that the guy who played Freddie should get an Oscar. So I, I, and I thought the uh, other band members were really they close. Look, they they look, yeah. And especially, you know, when I see a movie about the Beatles or about Elvis or uh, about Truman or JFK, they're, right. JFK movies are always the worst to watch because you're like, it's so modern and you totally know what he looks like. And then they're all trying to do an accent. Yeah, it's awful. It's tough to pull off. But this was, I mean, he looked like him. The band looked like the band members. It was really cool. Yeah, that's all. Did he sing? Did he perform the parts as no. well? No, he didn't. No. I, he might have maybe sang in something, but I, you you can't really duplicate yeah, yeah, it's, that. It's a hard yeah. that range. But when you when you hear it, it's actual tracks from the from the band Queen. Actual actual it was actual music from Live Aid that live I, performance. I also too I liked kind of some of the stories, whether they were made up or not, or exaggerated or not. Of how some of the songs came to be, like uh, the, for instance, with uh, "We Will Rock You." That you was know. made up. Was that made up? That part wasn't real. Yeah, yeah. that's too bad. The band had been doing that uh, prior; had been doing that for a while. Well, even um, some of the story. I mean, it was just an overall good movie, but it was yeah, you know. I liked it. Speaking of music, you have something to add? No, go ahead. Uh, speaking of music, um, Sticks is back doing a big tour. Really? And wait, do you hear who they're teaming up with? Yes. Larry the Cable Guy. Are you kidding oh, me? What the heck are they doing? Uh, the tour is called Laugh Rock. Seriously? I, that's how I would respond. The band Sticks and Larry the Cable Guy coming to a small bar near you. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd love to have a drink with Larry the Cable Guy. Pay to see him? Not uh, so much. Yeah. All right. Listen, we got to go. Be careful out there. There are warnings. Keep posted at WIBX950.com for details.